Hello, welcome to PM Express Personality Friday. I'm hanging out with a true son of tradition. He's Ghanaian and he's carved a setting brand for himself when it comes to music and creative arts. My guest on PM Express Personality Profile is Amanzuba. Amanzuba, it's great to be in your space for this interaction. <laughs> nice one, nice I see nice you're one, playing nice the acoustic nice guitar. Is it something you do very often? People don't see you play on stage, but are you good, that good with Ooh, acoustics? Well, I revere the guitar because it is actually my aid. Um, I would not say that I love to play it out there because it really helps me arrange and get my tones right. You know, you can have, you may have a very good idea about tunes and stuff like that, but when you don't have the instrument to guide you, you can veer off a little bit. So I actually revere the guitar and it's my aid. I take it everywhere and when I'm writing, I make sure that I press the right notes to make sure that I've gotten my stuff really, really, really good. So this so, helps you to compose A great well. deal. I think that every composer needs an instrument that will really guide them, especially, especially um, the, the tonal ones, the one that you can have the tones, the keys that will guide you so that you don't actually be discordant in your presentation. You, the, the, the music which brought you to the limelight after your separation from Nacorex, a group which you formed, uh, is Wokbe. So can you engage us with some uh, tunes from Wokbe? Wajer shong. Keje Israel, Keba Egypt, Keje Ethiopia, Keje Sudan, Waje Shong. Keje Ikushima, you know, Wani me kona me Waje Shong. So so Timbuktu, Ghana, Mali, Sumanguru, you know, Waje Shong. Wogbe Jeke, Ejeke Jeke. You see, the most interesting, (laughs) amazing. The most interesting um, thing about um, Ghanaian music or African music, but I'll, you know, lay special emphasis on Ghanaian music. Our languages are very tonal, Mm. so I have actually transformed my vocal um, ability to sound very much Ghanaian, Ghanaian. because. we speak and they are very tonal. So you find melody in our speeches. Mm. So that's basically what I did with Work by JK. Mm. Even though it has so many cordial what changes. What was the inspiration? Like you, you sang an English version of Work by. I love Work by so much. I mean, I'm, I'm biased towards your music because I'm, I'm a great fan of African music. So I, I'm not being uh, discriminatory against the other forms of music in Ghana. But I do find that when you travel outside of Ghana and you have a feel of Ethiopian music, um, even uh, Sudan music, even Senegalese music, you can tell the different rhythms and they carry the, the uniqueness of their country's identity. I don't see that a lot with some of our music journals until I listen to yours. What was the inspiration for Wogba? Uh, first of all, let me... Uh you know, put this in my own perspective. As when what you, you were saying hit um, a right note uh, in my heart and in my mind. And I have always had this conviction that when you present anything that is artistic, it must have an origin. And so an identity. it must have an, uh, an origin. And within that origin comes an identity. So as soon as I sound and I sing, you must know that mm, this thing is from Ghana. And when you, you come to Ghana, you say, mm, this thing is from Accra. 
Mm, this thing is a fancy song. Mm, this thing is a tree song. This thing is, you, you understand. So, we are the only ones in the world, I mean, Ghanaians, who can, ha- you know, assimilate anything at all other than what, what they have. You understand, the Ghanaian is more German than the German. The Ghanaian mo- is See, more, more English American than, English. than American. Yeah. But the Ghanaian cannot be himself. And so we, we will have to use tools like music or specifically culture to address all those anomalies. Otherwise, we become a laughing stock. Um, I want to sound like an American in my, in my music. And then they ask you, where are you from? I said, I'm from Ghana. And they go, like, oh, really? Wow, really? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so um, we suffer from cultural promiscuity. We want to experiment with everything. We marry everything other than ours. We have to be influenced by music, art that come from outside. But I think that the largest component of what you put out there must be yours from within, about 80% of it. We, we can use certain melodies and stuff like that. But I'm saying that basically, put out something that makes you feel and makes the audience know exactly your geographical location. You must, you must be very well read or educated uh, in a sense that when I listen to the lyrics of Wokwe, it looks like you trace the history from the old Malian Songo empire of Ghanaians and through our origin to, to slavery and all. I mean, why did you think it would be necessary to tell a story this way in a song? Let me... Uh, throw light on what I think education is. Every individual must be able to educate himself in or out of the classroom. Whether you like it or not, education is a key that opens doors. But I'm telling you, arts and culture is the key that opens every door. So when you get into it, you must really, really dive and delve deeper into what you really want to come out with. And I, I can tell you that music has been one of the biggest tools that has actually enlightened me. So I read from every corner. I get myself educated by interactions that I have with little ones, elderly ones, and stuff like that. You need that. You need that. Otherwise, then... You can't even explain the trade within which you are building your vocation. What, 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 what is um, uh, uh, um, very absent in our, in our environment, in our setting, is, 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 the, is, is common sense. And I, I always tell people that I'm a graduate of the University of Common Sense. Because, you see, we have not really applied common sense in every aspect of our endeavors as as a nation. Why is it that we will advertise Ghanaian products and yet be using foreign music as, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? source of entertainment. Exactly. You you, you are selling coconut and you are using, um, let's say, Michael Jackson's music to sell a Ghanaian coconut. You expect that Ghanaians will buy your product or your produce, and then you are using a foreign uh, 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 vehicle to, to, to really reach out to the To drive people. that product. It is not right. And basically, that is lack of common sense as I see it. You have a certain philosophy, I can see, but tell me how uh, you grew up um, as a child, born into what type of family structure, and how did that influence your decision eventually to be a musician first, and then being a musician then begin to rebrand yourself into what I call an African icon, really? First of all, I think that um, one needs to gain that kind of high level of consciousness before you know exactly what your destination is. And um, as early as four years, anybody who asked me what I was going to do, I said I was going to be a singer, a pop singer, even though I did not actually know what it would take to be that. But that was what I felt, and it was an inborn thing. So anything that comes to conflict or run contrary or be at variance with my aims, my dreams and aspiration at that tender age, I saw it as something that was actually going to 
blur my vision. Like a hostile. So I, 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 I am very stubborn, but a very, a, a very positive, stubborn person. You see, w you don't really have to be um, stubborn for no reason or a rebel for no reason. Because if for some reason I have found out that in 50 years, in 60 years, in 70 years, this is what I'm going to become. It is between me and my God. So I, I have come from a family, a background that my father was a very, very, very strict disciplinarian, almost to the point that I thought that he was a Puritan. You understand? Because this is a man who, has, who had in his library every genre of music. Because I was exposed to every kind of music, classical, I mean, high life, uh, um, foreign music, soca. everything, guitar band, big band, high life, and stuff like that. And he saw in me something else that I didn't see in me. Because obviously, when you have a bright lad, <laughs> you know, it's very typical of the Ghanaian to say, okay, then I'm actually going to construct his for him. Exactly. Whip him into medicine or law. Hey, exactly. <laughs> but you see, you need to equip yourself with the basic tools. I believe that everybody, if we had the chance, must be able to learn how to read and write and understand. I mean, be very, 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 very uh, 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 astute in whichever profession that you find yourself and you did in. that right and you I, learned I, how to I, read. I, I, I did exactly that and I'm still learning we are reading and we are consuming like um, <laughs> you know people who have faced famine ye for years you understand because I think it's interesting when you just don't um, get into a trade just because it's fashionable and everybody's doing it I have I, I tell people when they tell me, oh, well, you are one of the greatest musicians. Uh, but I see myself as a messenger via music because I am not just singing. I think I'm singing and I'm speaking. I combine the two. My, my, my speech is what people think I'm singing. But they are melodious speeches that I'm making because you don't need to really get into the uh, nitty-gritties of um, music before you can actually uh, send out your message. I try as much as possible to limit myself in terms of the melodies that I, I churn out because Ghanaians are very, very funny. I remember when I released um, Ama, that was my debut album. I sold in Accra, it was a big hit. And when we took the stuff to Kumasi, for them to, you know, market it and stuff like that. I was told that, oh, yeah, dear, yempe, abrofunyumu, abrofunyumu, dear, yempe. You know, but two, three years down, <laughs> here were these people, as if they didn't know that a Ghanaian composed the tune, Ama. Meanwhile, I, I, have, I have this, this conviction that I think that uh, womanhood represents fertility. So I glorify women, I glorify Ghanaian names. And Ama is mm. one of... The Can you simplest. play us some of the tunes of Amma to, to make uh, our audience get a feel of Amma? Girl, I know I can stop loving you I do like all you do Your world I'll forever live in your word I'll forever believe in Your love Is what I'll always hang on Your hand Will never make me go wrong You have all that I want I'm a You see, so And um, I was amazed um, Later on, a couple of years ago, then people called me, Oh, um, I'm a new one, you be a whore. Um, oh, you hear me, pa, you come as But that was daring. It was daring. Um, I, I, I'm beginning to recall when Ama came into the scene. Ama's a being a very young man. That's right. And I recall it's, it's very daring in a sense that mm -hmm. for, for, 
typical Ghanaian musician, high life musician to make a melodious tune of that nature in English was Darren. Did you think that you could sell when you wow. were making that song or you were not thinking about selling points? I right? was, I was, you see, um, most of the time my, my, my focus is not on the profits I was going to make because I knew I was going to make profit anyway. Um, the uniqueness of, 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 of a song like Ama is actually stemming out from the fact that it is a Ghanaian name, a simple, a three-letter uh, name, A-M-A. And then there hadn't been um, Ghanaians exuding romance. I listened to quite a number of stuffs, and I think that uh, Kin Bruce... Uh, of Black Beats fame because I, we had lots of their records. Um, a, a, a romantic song like Bono Chono Hamo Sain, Bono Fio No Tamo Masay, Bono Talisa Bublevi Koya No Atrepe. You know, those were beautiful songs, but they were, make, they were not making songs like that anymore. Yeah. So I thought that, listen, to appeal to a wider audience, because of course I know music has, language has no barrier in terms of music. But the fact is that when you really want people also to understand it immediately, the lingua franca that you have to employ should be a language that seemed to be universal. You understand? Because then when I did that, it was so magical because I remember Ama was uh, the song that gave me the recognition. Uh, the Leisure Awards, I, was, I, was, I, was, I received an award um, in line of the Discovery of the Year. And if I tell you how it was, you know, uh, accepted by everyone, there's no up to today when I get on stage and I announce that I'm playing. I'm a, the whole it, I mean, place. That, that feeling of nostalgia is established immediately. Well, so <laughs> we'll take a short break. Uh, I'm hanging out with Amanzaba Nat Brew, and uh, we're talking about his music career. And then we'll take a break. When we return, we'll talk about how he transformed himself from singing in a band in a group, Nakorex, to the brand Amanzaba, which he is today. Stay with us. Right, we've just caught up with Amanziba at his hideout in the eastern part of Accra. He's going to walk us round his this hangout and tell us what he does outside music. So Amanziba, it's great to be in your in your hood. <laughs> so so tell us, I mean, walk us around here. This looks like a very huge property. What do you do here, really? Well, if you look around, you realize that um, there are some sort of uh, indication of construction mm. first of all you know i'm an entertainer so yeah. of course we need to promote live entertainment so this is exactly where i want to you know put up a structure that will house a lot of entertainers i'm talking about live music i see yes because um we need we need to promote it ourselves uh, complimenting your efforts i mean i know you guys are in the media yeah. and you yeah. do a lot for us but i mm. think your 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 lot is not enough so we'll have to add some more to many, it. Many people know you as a musician and you, you have a unique blend of African tunes in, in, in your music. So it means that beyond music, you, you do other things. I well. meddle in a Greek because, I mean, it's an interesting area. Um, at, at a point um, after holidays, at a point during holidays, my, my old man will send us to our Greek schools, you know, we, we gather some sort of um, education in um, poultry and stuff. But that is e exactly what we practice here. So we have some chickens, we have um, 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 goats, goats sheep. sheep, we have pigs. <laughs> and then, um, of course, the, the chickens uh, give us eggs too as well. As well. Wow, that's very interesting. So for how long have you been doing this? I mean, this looks like a property which has been here for quite a while. Well, uh, obviously, you haven't been seeing me around, mm. you know, like um, clubs, discos and stuff like that, because I'm a very private person. Yeah. So I love, really, really, I love to be 
be hiding myself all the time. So I come here. This gives me a very huge break, significantly, because, of course, you know that um, when you are a creator, you need that kind of congenial environment to be able to, um, let's say, master your, your, master your work. Uh, exactly. So I see. This in itself is, is... So you get a lot of inspiration from oh, here. Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, under those trees. You know, you, this place used to be very, very much secluded. Because when we came here about 15, 15 to 20 years ago, there was only Johnson Wax, Spinkters, and us. Wow. So you can imagine, uh, on your way here, you meet quite a lot of wildlife. I'm talking about the big cats, snakes, you know, all sorts of pythons, rabbits... You know, all, all, all those interesting things. And, wow, and you, sadly, you lived through it all. Sadly, sadly, we've, we've almost lost it all. Because, of course, I don't know what the environmental protection uh, agencies are doing in this regard. But I think that they must redouble their efforts in, in reclaiming some of the lost uh, uh, wildlife that we, we have actually experienced. And so so sh share with us some of your your early memories of this place uh, when, when, when you lived here? Well, um, I think that you are sending me right down memory lane. I want to do Which comes with sort of uh, 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 nostalgia. Mm. I, wish, I wish we could roll back that time. But I'm telling you, it was a very beautiful experience. Um, we you pay are, to... Were we, you in touch with nature? We pay to go to the zoo to, to, to actually, you know, view some of these... Um, exotic animals um, you would not Im in your wildest imagination think that there used to be huge pythons like cobras I mean we are talking about all species of you know snakes yeah, I mean I, I can't believe it because this place looks very serene and I would imagine that a couple of years back there were snakes and other wildlife here really um, you haven't even spoken about the uh, big cats I'm, talking, yeah, I'm not cats. talking about the lions, lions and the tigers, no. Wild but cats. we have, um, yeah, the wild cats, the very, very big ones. The guns call it Koshiawawo. I don't know I what see. you, you know. call it in English. <laughs> but they, they were the very, very big, um, you know, animals that we had here that mm. they actually will let you, you know, will send shivers uh, down, down your, your spine. spine. You know that when, you met a wild ex cat. Exactly. You stop for them to cross or, you know, you speed up before they cross and that kind of thing. And it was, it was so interesting. Mm. So, who, I mean, at the time, you lived here with your family? Well, this is, interestingly, <laughs> this is where uh, Akwisi and I had our first girl, Irama, who is about 16 now. So you can imagine. I mean, it, it goes way back. You have memories of this place. So <laughs> tell us, I mean, uh, what you did then when you, you, you were here and then what you do now. I mean, I, I always had... A farming area. Yes, I always had... What do you occupy yourself with on a daily basis? Early in the morning. Early in the morning, I woke up, made sure that um, the, the chickens are fed. You know, I attend to my... Um, vegetable farm and then um, I had quite a number of uh, uh, what do you call it vegetables like uh, the onions like the tomatoes like the carrots like the spring onions and all that you know I love veg too as well you know so I, I really made sure that I had them you know organically grown and these days, you know, we are genetically inducing. So you made money the, from them, or no, no, no. It was not for, for it was not for commercial purposes okay. because all of these areas were abundantly, you know, uh, 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 full of uh, what do you call it, um, the vegetables. So you necessarily don't uh, 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 didn't have to go out there to buy any uh, uh, anything. You we grew everything here, but then when you don't have it, you just look around and then your you next neighbor for yeah exactly your your, your 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 neighbor has it i mean life must be very easy for you when you're able to diversify some people know you as a very very capable musician and well established in your own right from the days of nacorex even to today so then we also now are getting to know you as a real farm person how do you <laughs> juggle the two really it's easy i mean uh, if you ask any of uh, the foreign musicians that you know, the very prominent ones, they'll tell you that every genuine musician is very much in touch with nature. Mm. So obviously, 
the soil and you, the man also from the soil, is, is, is so much like you are at home. You understand. So getting into farming and stuff like that is, is so natural. It's, it's, it's nothing to, you know, uh, 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 conjecture about it. It falls within your capabilities, your abilities, and then your mental state. Because obviously when you are nurturing something, I treat music like I'm growing crops. You understand? Yeah, yeah because uh, when you conceive an so idea, when, yeah, okay. it is the grounds for you to plant the seed. You understand? So... I, I normally will wake up in the morning and look, uh, make sure that all the chicks are fed. And then when I finish, I go underneath that tree, that big tree, um, around there. Maybe you pick it up later. Yeah. And then I sit there with my acoustic guitar. And play. I have my, my, my book to write my lyrics. I have my book to, you know, make my scores, write my notations and stuff like that. That's very interesting. And, no, you see, I challenge myself in the sense that, you know, in every profession, you have to wake up in the morning and make sure that you achieve something within a day. Mm. So if I'm not able to write a line or a song or maybe a verse or a complete sketch of a song a day, I feel I have failed in my daily endeavor. So is there so, a particular song which you, you kind of composed here? Which you can you can remember and yes. perhaps sing a yes. few lines yes. for us to yes to and it is it is one of the songs that actually established me which, which is, is Wogbejeke Wogbejeke yes it so, was written right here right here right here what what was the but, inspiration really I would ask you to sing a line or two <laughs> let so me, that people can let me, <laughs> let me let me actually tell you an interesting thing yeah. um, I do not know why but. The bathroom, specifically the toilet, is where I have a lot of inspiration. I don't people know. People say it a lot. People say it? I mean, a lot of people get inspiration <laughs> when they sit in the small room. That's that, where their concentration yeah. is. Like. And I can, I can spend hours there. And, you know, so from there, <laughs> from there, I come right underneath the tree. I see. And the tree is where I actually put finishing touches to the, to the sketches that I do. So at the end of the day, when I'm able to... Uh, I get a lot of satisfaction from the work I've done. I just pick my recorder and then record a sketch. Interesting. Yes. And you see, you wake up in the morning and hear all sorts of melodies from the birds. And birds they're, singing. They're, they're too, they they so are quite irritating here we, sometimes. Here, here we are. So how many chickens are here? Oh, uh, approximately. Uh, we have about uh, uh, 200, 200 here. 300 here. Yeah. Now we have about 300. But there used to be about 1,000. But... Um, you see, uh, you get to a stage where you are not really, really, really uh, comfortable with your environment because the encroachment, the noise, you know, these chicks are supposed to enjoy peace. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm keen because you, you mentioned that the, the chicks, they, they, they need serenity. These are no more chicks. These are chickens they are chickens. Now. They've actually yeah. grown, grown from chicks right. to... So they are layers chickens. and broilers. Yes, uh, they, they are layers. They're you layers. know, we don't keep the broilers anymore. The layers... Um, the broilers... It, it takes a lot to feed the mm -hmm. broilers. And the mm -hmm. profit margin is very, very insignificant. You, mm -hmm. you end up... It's not all about profit, but the fact is that you have to make sure you break even so you, 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 you sustain. Because if you invest money, exactly. you need to make you sure that it. your exactly. turnover is good. Exactly. Mm. They're already singing. Yeah. Because they, they've seen the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are singing. This is, this is showbiz chickens. I know. <laughs> You must enjoy, you, you, you do really enjoy this, <laughs> oh, this yes. cozy aspect of yes, your life. Yes, Many yes. people don't know. You are a very private person. You, you told us earlier that you're a very private person. Mm. What makes you that private? I mean, I would think that I've, I've met you several times on various platforms. I would think that a man, a musician, well accomplished of your caliber, you shouldn't be so private. It is not... Um, intentional, you understand, but <laughs> it is part of my nature. It's actually at the center of my nature, and there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. Sometimes I yearn to go out there, have fun, but then I'll end up at the beach yeah. in solitude. Yeah. You understand? And which, but that which is, you enjoy. Whilst people think it's solitude, that's what you enjoy. Well, well. But then, you see, we, uh, we normally gravitate towards 
um, um, uh, a peaceful environment. Because mm. the, whole, the whole vocation or the whole profession that we get ourselves in needs that peace to be able to create things that uh, people will talk about it and get amazed and say, oh, wow, I love this tune. Mm, this is deep. This is that. I mean, you can't just be creative when there's so much noise around you and stuff like that. So I think that naturally um, I, 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 I am a private person, not by choice, but I was born that way. Born that way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This, this is where the pigs are. Mm. How many pigs in all do you have here? Oh, we have um, 39. Wow. Um, that, um, this man, this guy here, <laughs> the boy here, yeah. has got three ladies to service. I see. <laughs> and they, they don't quarrel among no, themselves? The sars, no, 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 not at all. I mean, they are not like us. Because these three sars are very loyal to their man. I see. So maybe in two, three weeks, when they take seed, they'll be transferred to... You know, the maternity. I see. <laughs> that will be their maternity That's right. area. <laughs> that where they can area. finish their gestation Ex period. Exactly. And give exactly. birth to the piglets. Exactly. Exactly. This, this is a lot of work. I mean, this mm. you means that you need to hire uh, labor, extra hands to do mm. a lot of the cleaning and a lot of the grooming for these pigs. I mean, that must be a lot of investment. Well, you need to have, um, first of all, someone who really loves to to do this to do this otherwise then you'll be wasting your time yeah. and money yeah because they will not be able to clean the place very well yeah. and yeah. then they will not be able to attend to them yeah. very well yeah. um most of the work we do it ourselves i mean when uh, at my leisure time i can come here and then you know clean up wow. my brothers also do that you know and then um, the guys we, we 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 live here just like our brothers too so they i see they they, they do so why is this one? Uh, ah, this just gave birth yeah. to not how many? Just, not just a day, but a couple uh, of weeks. Three, yeah, almost so three that's weeks, uh, five. Yeah, but a very very healthy one. Oh, so it's time to breastfeed. <laughs> exactly. Ah, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Look at it. So she has to lie down in position exactly. for them. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. I mean, this, 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 is, this, is, this is the most um, intriguing part of nature. Yeah. For her to have that understanding that it's time, that to, it's feed. time to feed. Obviously, I mean, instinctively, they will go there, start touching the, the, breast, the breast, and then, and then suck Mommy it. will know, oh, okay, you're hungry. Okay. Yeah. Then. This is it. Interesting. You have to see them in a few weeks' time. Yeah. These ones. Maybe in about six weeks or maximum two months. They will be big yeah. enough. They will be like this. Some like will be this. bigger than these ones. Interesting. Very interesting. And I, with I the, know. With the, with the pigs, I think um, they're not too expensive to, to, to maintain. To, to, to maintain, to handle. I see. Yeah, because they, they virtually eat everything. But you need to uh, make sure that. You are not really fattening them. You know, they are yeah. so much of fat and stuff. Capable of so, being fat. Mm, potentially, they can grow. <laughs> about four or five uh, pigs could actually could fill up this, this place. Yeah, you know, fill up this place. But, you know, you need to uh, 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 in, uh, uh, give them, in their diet, you have to uh, also add more some fiber greens and greens. And fiber. I see. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's very, very fill interesting. Up, yeah. Like the 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 the, the, the skin of um, uh, watermelon, you know, when you just peel the watermelon, mm. you bring the, the 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 peels here. They 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 love it. They love it. They love it. They and that's very it. nutritious, actually. Very. I very. see. So so this is what you do. I mean, in your in your leisure time, that's that's very interesting. Yeah. There are many yeah. many younger people than you. I mean, perhaps younger than myself who don't see farming as lucrative. For somebody as successful in the music industry as you, uh, what would you say to young men and women out there who have no jobs, really, and are filing applications constantly at big companies to get themselves jobs to do when things <laughs> like this uh, are easy yeah. to do? You know, I am, I am a, I'm a very unconventional person. 
when I was growing up, when I became very conscious of my existence in this world, I think I had a contract with myself that I was never going to let anybody employ me. And it is also due to the upbringing that you, 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 you may have. You understand, my father is a very, 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 uh, you know, uh, uh, farm uh, conscious uh, man. <laughs> I am telling you, a Greek is at the center of my father's heart. Because he says, no matter what, his philosophy is, yeah. no matter what, you will eat. You will eat. So if you get into the food industry, you are in the right business. You will never make losses. You will never make losses. That's true. And, 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 and people will always when, want to eat. Exactly. So mu that's the reason why music and entertainment are almost always, you know... Intertwined. A exactly. Married. And that's because people will have to be entertained, people will have to eat. These are the basic tools we need to propel our developmental agenda to if we, 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 we really, really, really are committed to achieving or attaining a middle income status without the bats and ifs and stuff like that. We have to then grow it what means we eat. that we'll have to definitely promote what we have here in, in, in terms of uh, the food we eat. Before the recent elections, you were very outspoken and uh, spoke in, in support of uh, the candidate John That's Mills, who, sorry, John Mahama, right. uh, who right. uh, incidentally is the president right. now. Um, how do you think that your role as a musician, or maybe I should, I should call you uh, a creative arts person, how is this contributing to national discourse and political decisions? Are you a politician? No, I, I believe that basically everybody must imbibe a certain form of politics mm. because indeed if you have to get a word across to the powers that be or policy makers you you have to relate them uh, um, um, uh, on the same plane mm. that they, they, they belong mm. so that's the reason why um, I think um, it is important for us to have uh, people representative of the voices or of the people that have no voices mm. of course um, I don't need to do political science to know that basically food must be put on the table morning, afternoon, and evening yeah. for there to be harmony instead of the rancor that we go in. I mean, when people are hungry, they get angry very yeah. easily. Um, my, my, uh, like, just like you alluded to the fact that I endorsed uh, JM, I, 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 I think I have a personal relationship with him, and the man is, is so mundane, he can actually listen to whatever uh, 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 um, you bring to the table. You bring to the table. Mm. And the discourses that we've had so far point to the fact that he indeed mm. wants to you know, help propel the entertainment industry to a height that has never been known in this country. Ghana, if things things go well and uh, 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 you know like um, the commitments that everybody is supposed to master to be behind the, uh, uh, the entertainment industry I'm telling you it's going to be the hub of, 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 of uh, 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 this continent the hub of entertainment on this continent because you know um, we are looking at a country that has so much in terms of culture and yet we don't have any major festival in this country I recently returned from Burkina Faso, Kudugu to be precise, with performances from Mewe, Manu Dubango was supposed to be there, so many artists from Africa. And Kudugu is a small village, a, a small town. I think it's the, set, the third largest city in uh, uh, Burkina, Burkina Faso. Faso. But they are doing wonders in terms of entertainment and, and I think uh, in terms of uh, agriculture too, because we saw uh, so many. Uh, food vendors, vegetable vendors. We saw so many farms and stuff like that. This is what is actually going to make Ghana known all over the world. It's entertainment and how we feed ourselves. Right, this is uh, PM Express personality profile and I'm speaking with Amanzibai, the true son of the land. That's the meaning 
of his name. Originally born Nat Brew, he's a well-established musician whose music journal is influenced by a lot of African tunes, band logo, high life, uh, francophone fusion, and all of that. We'll take a break, and when we return, we'll delve into the man himself. Talk about his family and where he gets its inspiration. And possibly he might play the acoustic guitar for you to enjoy. Stay with us. <laughs> Interesting. Welcome back. Uh, I'm hanging out with Amanzaba uh, Nadbru. Uh, Amanzaba, you, you formed Nakorex, which uh, had you as the leader of the, the group, uh, and then you had Akose Japan and then Rex Soma forming Nakorex. Nakorex was very successful. Tell us about your Nakorex days and looking back, whether you miss the group. Well, I do. Um, the only difference is that what I mean, I feel it sometimes, but you know, we are almost always around, so we see each other. So it's not like you know somebody's gone to Australia and somebody is in Papua New Guinea. You more like just split like after uh, releasing one album. Yes, you, you both went no different, two albums. Two albums. Two so. albums. Two albums. That's is it because you thought you were not successful as a no, group? No, 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 no. Far from that, I think that Nacorex was very, very successful. You see, um, we were individual artists before we came together, you know, before we got together. So um, I think that in our very formative uh, uh, years, there was this um, beauty pageant thing called Embassy Double Do, yes. and this gentleman, um, Smart Beniti, a Nigerian who used to be a partner. Uh, uh, for Balkan Airlines. I think there was uh, a Bulgarian and him. In fact, they actually initiated the Embassy Double Do thing. So they needed musicians to go along with them most of the time. So I was there one day when I had a call from Smart Beniti and uh, he, you know, espoused so much the fact that he wanted me to be uh, part of the Double Do, the musical aspect of it. So, well, I said, yes, why not? The terms were very fantastic in those days, so I thought it was cool. Then I realized that he had also uh, called Akos and had called Rex as well. And at that time, we were very much of, um, uh, 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 of individual stars in the country. So, in fact, I had made a hit. Akosia had made a hit. Rex had made a hit. Akosia had a Born Again. It was a hit. Rex had a um, Aquara Kitikiti, Umami Sais Na Ope. It was a hit. I had released Ama and Oreba Boshe and all those songs. So when we got there, we, you know, in one of our uh, programs, during one of our programs, I thought that, oh, the three budding stars, 
and we were performing as individuals. So right after the show, I think I must have spoken with both of them and said, listen, I think we have to redesign our act. Whoever goes first must end uh, the show by bringing the two of us all together so the three of us could make you know, one act together. And it was a hit. It was. Yeah. Out of that, I mean, I thought that, well, we definitely will have to find a name. It was so uh, 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 convenient for uh, uh, me to, you know, pick the N at the beginning of the night. Uh, Akosia A, and then Rex was ending. So then we had to complete it. it Nax was not going to be too good, or Na was not going to be too good. So, I said, so why don't we just add your whole Rex at the end of it? So it was, uh, I mean, uh, Akosia was a, uh, the K.O., yeah, I was with the NA. So Nacorex was so, 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 so much in place at that time. And it was so easy. But at, at a point, people thought it was the name of a drug because, you know, what you say, <laughs> Nacorex and Farmplex and <laughs> Complex and all. <laughs> Nacorex possibly <laughs> was a purgative. <laughs> so, but, but, but it was good. And yeah. I remember that that was what actually got us together. And we were inseparable from that point yeah. up until, you know, Rex released Abiba. On his own, I I, I released uh, uh, Kmalogo Fever after Kmalogo there, but it was under Nacorex at that time. And then um, uh, Akosia also had to release another album. But then, you know, love was blowing in the air. In then between, you got married. <laughs> between Akosia and I, so we had to, you know, settle. And we had, we had four offsprings out of Wow. It. So how many kids do you have, I mean, overall? Nine. Nine? Wow. So you have five with your present wife. You know, um, those, the, the other ones were out of, okay. you know, okay. wedlock. But these, I have one with my present wife. I had four with our coach. Wow. And then three others. So, the other ones, yeah. Yeah. Um, just like the typical African, I mean... Uh, so your royal we, old sense. We were the ones uh, who heard God saying, go into the world and multiply. And multiply. The others didn't hear that. So you, you, must, we, you <laughs> must love kids then. I, I, they adore me. I adore them to us. You know, kids, everywhere I go, kids gravitate towards me. And I don't know. I mean, as soon as I get here and there's a kid here... Please, you have to come to the family <laughs> gathering one day and see yeah. my, the, the offsprings of my siblings here. Everybody will be chasing Uncle Nat. Everybody. Everybody will be chasing me. Uh, you know, I don't know. But I have a way of interacting with them, you know, you know make, sometimes making uh, uh, realistic promises and un mm, unrealistic promises. promises. You know, the kids already. Kids, yeah. Uncle Nat, I want a Blackberry. Who? Oh, you want a Blackberry? Wait. Uh, don't you want mine? What, what is the type you're using? I said, I'm using an ashberry. He says, let me have a look at it. And when they have a look, I out, this is techno, it's not ashberry. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's so interesting. And um, Nacorex had to end that way. But a couple of years ago, Nacorex had a show. I think it was under, um, yeah, Miss Ghana. Rex, Akos, and I had a show, and then I think. I mean, the Embassy years, Double Do is what yes. what became Miss Ghana. What became Miss Ghana, and we I think after that we had about two or three shows, but recording wise, you know, um, Akosia is a gospel artist now. Now you understand. She's and, actually a Reverend Minister. Yes, and um, uh, Rex is more of a businessman than you know a musician now so it's so hard for us to find time to you know go back to those days but individually i think everybody is doing very well very well and um you know where i stand and i'm i'm a traditionalist um in the sense of my uh uh, 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 uh my shows yeah. my 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 the portrayal of amanzaba uh, and the name itself you understand um you know, graduating from Nat to Amanziba um, is where I thought that when a man is born again in the real sense, you have to be appropriately named. Renamed. And, you know, so that Amanziba is just the native son of the soil. Mm. So the, the, the awards tradition. you won, the numerous awards you won, Ooh. you won those awards as, as Nat Brew or as Amanziba? Um, I, I won or quite a number. I, I won quite a number of them as Nat Brew. Um, 
uh, Nacorex, yes, had the best band during the aircraft time. Um, but Amanzibar's award has come from Ghana Music Awards. Amanzibar's award has come from the Alpine Music Festival in Switzerland. Amanzibar's award has come from um, um, the University of Ghana, the, the Ghana community in the University of Ghana. I've had um, um, the U.S. Embassy uh, Cultural Ambassador in Amanzibar. And um, quite a number of them. I th I so which, 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 which of these awards um, are your most um, cherished awards? I know as an artist, any award is a recognition of the work you've done. But you must hold a particular one very dear to your heart. Which one is it? I think that um, Ghana Music Awards gave me the best original music and the best, um, was it, uh, the best original music and... Uh, the, the, the best um, Ghanaian music, which was the uh, Work by JK album. Um, Ghana Music Awards also gave me um, a High Life Award that was on my Lolo Juju album. But I think that everything has to be, you know, formed on a very sound foundation. So the most important award that I think I won in my life is, was um, the Leisure Awards Discovery of the Year. Because that was when I released my first album, my first ever album, and then I, I had an award. And it really, really propelled me to the stage that made me quite confident and then thought that, no, then this is where I have to start my real career on. So I think that that was the most important award because that was my first award. That's, it's, it's like your first love. I mean, it opens your eyes to so many things, you understand? So leisure awards... Discovery of the Year was one of the most important. But I love to be an original composer, so I had to really accept that the best original music is one of my best. Let's talk about the industry, the, the industry you're working. Uh, before I do that, I, I recall that your, your recent tribute to the late Professor Mills was very touching because you have a, you have a personal relationship with him, right? He's your uncle? He's my uncle. And, he's, um, yeah. he's my uncle. Uh, Professor Mills's mother is the twelfth uh, daughter of my grandmother, and my grandmother is the seventh amongst them. So they are sisters. So Professor Mills is my f uh, father's first cousin. I see. He's my uncle. So your and brothers, then, more like. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Now he's my friend, uncle. Your uncle. He, he and my father are brothers. Mm. You understand? Because they come from the same sisters. My uh, Professor Mills's mother being the twelfth of the Dosinamwas, and then my mom, my grandmom being the seventh of the Dosinamwas. I see, your family, yeah. your real yeah. family. So when yeah. you're doing this, you did it out of um, uh, pain in oh, your heart, Oh, right? yes. But oh, I mean, yes. it was a good hit. It's oh, one yes. of the best um, tribute songs, oh, yes. apart from... Uh, he was not songs. only the president of Ghana, he was, he was actually our lawyer. He was the lawyer for Nakorex. He drew our contracts that we had with other people. People, don't know. in fact, it was after his demise that um, I made it public that he was my uncle. Of course, when he's the president and you are misbehaving somewhere, it, it rubs on him. So you need you needed to hide those, you know, uh, uh, tracks. He never, I never wanted anybody to know that he was my uncle. But a few That's people very knew. That's very interesting. So about the music industry today, the issues with copyright and everything. Are Ghanaian musicians really making money? Are, they, are their intellectual properties well protected? Uh, is the copyright system working in Ghana? It is working because we have the legal instruments in place now. Uh, we are uh, operating within a very sound legal framework. The problem we have is enforcement. The law is there, but you still see people in our streets selling um, pirated works and stuff like that. You may not find Ghanaian works here, but they pirate them here and send it over our borders. So that's what we need to do. We have actually thought of, you know, getting ECOWAS to form a very, very, very uh, comprehensive task force, you know, comprising the various uh, re uh, representation from the various countries so we can actually police our borders because things that come in, you are not supposed to bring in if it is a, 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 a recording, a soundtrack, you're supposed to bring in only one CD. That's what the law says. 
because if you bring them in large quantities then you must have procured an agreement or a contract with the original uh, 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 producer or the composer of the work before you'll be allowed to duplicate them here but you can't bring them en masse into the country so any of that is infringement that's basically pr uh, principally where we are suffering our losses from but most Ghanaians are making money now because you know we, you have people releasing on the uh, 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 via the internet they don't necessarily have to produce records and so they get remuneration from uh, uh, um, those angles so I think that uh, so far, I think uh, for now, the Ghana Music Rights Organization, which I'm a deputy chairman, um, have a very strong task force that is going around. You mean Gamru? Gamru, mm. that is going around um, a, 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 in collaboration with the police and the judiciary. That we are actually uh, uh, um, arresting uh, infringers of copyright and stuff, and they are being prosecuted. So I think that from this month onwards, you will actually realize um, a sanitary condition uh, as far as um, the industry is concerned. Let me shift, let me get controversial a bit. Um, Azonto. Azonto has um, more like taking over the, 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 the music space which indigenous musicians like you enjoyed before but I'm not sure whether you as a, a creative arts person or as an indigenous musician is concerned with the proliferation of Azonto, are you? Um, let me give you an example. Like, I am a father of nine children. When I gave birth to my second child, I didn't expect my first child to die. Every form of genre must be allowed to, right. to thrive. That is the beauty and, of, of, of what we have as Ghanaians. Azonto is very Ghanaian. The only thing we need to do as practitioners is to sit and get one major rhythm that will go. With it. The dance is what has caught on. Everywhere, everybody is doing the dance. But we need to create music that will go with it. When the Ivorians did the Zuglu and stuff like that, there was the rhythm, there was the music to go with it, and there was the dance to go with it. And now Azon, there is the music Azonto, to go with Azonto, Azonto Azonto basically, dance. Azonto basically is Ghanaian rhythm. So it is not alien to what we play at all. The fact is that they have actually eliminated some of the instruments. And so you're only hearing the drum beat and the bass and the, and, and, and the kick. That's all. But we can introduce horns and make rearrangements and reorchestration. Azonto is Ghanaian. So I'm so proud. But I, as an artist... You're not threatened that Azonto will take the oh, space not, not, which not, you've dominated Not for at a all. While. When I was releasing Work by JK, there was... Um, hip life and everybody was saying oh Charlie, this thing is nice but you know you're going to have problems the hip because the hip kill, it. kill it but you know music is music and every music must be allowed well to music try. is music that's what Amanziba is saying and we've spent a long time talking with Amanziba so before we leave uh, can you play us something uh, which should should send our viewers uh, into memory lane this is going to be a new one. It's a new one. Okay, so uh, teasers. To be continued. <laughs> to be continued. My name is Stephen Antti, and thanks for staying with us on PM Express Personality Profile.